Hi, and welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. My name is Lisa Curcio. Today is Monday, October 18th, and the year is 2021. This is a YouTube live streaming event. Whether you are here watching the replay or you are here with me live, I am so glad that you've come by my channel. Thank you for being here with me. Tonight, I have double the fun for you. We are gonna create two projects they coordinate, but keep your imagination open because you're going to be able to use both of these ideas for a multitude of things. I'm going to teach you how to make a very easy pull card. And I'm also going to teach you how to make a party favor. And I'm going to kind of lean on party favor to include gifts for teachers, classrooms, birthday parties, retirements, stocking stuffers, lots of great things to use for this project. What's really interesting about this project tonight is actually the party favor was installed or developed years ago, and I haven't seen any videos on it. I used to make them for craft fairs and they were a huge seller. So I incorporated it with a coordinating card to teach you tonight. I'm gonna to teach you both. So I hope you like chocolate like I do because I've got lots of fun in store for you. Something very important you need to know tonight is you're gonna be able to find a very extensive and free project sheet for the projects I'm gonna share with you tonight. It includes all the cutting dimensions, the supplies, and multiple pictures of each project. You're gonna find those down in the video description below, which is underneath the title for tonight's video. If you're here with the live stream, you're gonna see Gina. She's my moderator. Her name is in blue, and she's gonna share that link with you later on in the live stream. But it's gonna be available for everyone when the stream is over. And since I spoke about Gina, I want to introduce you to her. You're gonna see her name is Gina Curcio Holly. Her surname is the same as mine. She is my daughter. She's our sales and marketing director here at Lisa Stamp Studio, and she's been stamping 23 years. She is more than versed to be able to answer your questions about stamping and about product, because quite honestly, during the live stream, it's impossible to keep up, so Gina's here to help interact with you. And then finally, we love to chat with you. Do me a favor, log into your YouTube account, which uses your Gmail address, and then you can interact with us, whether it's here during the live or leaving a comment after for the replay. I come back and I read every single one. We're ready, let's get started. Now something really exciting that happened just hours ago, I wanna let you know about before we go too far because this is big news. If you like a sale, you are in store for this one. 15% off all cling stamp sets are going to begin for a 24 hour period only. And that is October, I almost said Wednesday, it is. It's Wednesday, October 20th of 2021, 24 hour only period. Keep in mind, if you go over to my website, lisastampstudio.com, and you click on rewards, you'll find information there for my exclusive host code, and I give you extra ordering rewards. That is only for this week on Wednesday. All right, here we go. We are here at the surface. Let's get started. How many of you love chocolate? I have a secret passion for chocolate. I think it should be a food group. Years ago, I created these, like I said, for craft fairs, and I decided to use some designer series paper to teach you how I made that project, which bled into the next project. Now, you might be looking at this designer series paper going, wow, well, where is that? Well, that's a little sneak peek of what's coming your way on November 2nd, so let me show you. There is a brand new bundle coming your way called Eden's Garden. Now this is gonna be carried over into the next mini catalog, which will debut in January, but you're gonna be able to purchase it early on November 2nd. The bundle includes the stamp set. Don't you love that font and those images and the coordinating dies? Oh, stunning, stunning. But wait, it just gets better because there's this. So let me show you a little bit about the designer series paper. I'm one of those people who says seeing is believing, and you're gonna see that's the one that I've cut here. So there's this piece, and there's another. Here's the great thing about this. I don't know if it's gonna pick it up on camera, but there are gold flecks inside one side of all the patterns. Don't worry, I'm gonna flip them over. Absolutely stunning. And here's what I love about this. Although one side is very fancy schmancy, which I love, guess what? The other side is very, very generic which means you're gonna be able to use these all year round and they're gonna be great for masculine cards as well. Look at that ombre pattern, isn't that pretty? Now these designer series papers are gonna be available on November 2nd as well, as well as this. This is the cotton paper. Now the cotton paper is not something you're gonna to wanna to stamp on or emboss on or die cut on. I know, it's okay, but it's great for backgrounds and I wanna give you a tip. 
crinkle it up, uncrinkle it. I got that shared with me by a team member and it's great for backgrounds, also great for stuffing your packaging, gift card holders, that kind of thing. Now there is one other product that is available as part of this collection that I don't have because you guys all know about the shortages in shipping, right? There's lots of problems with ships stuck in the port right now. And these beautiful garden gems that you see right here are actually one of the products I couldn't get in time for tonight's live stream. They're coming, but I wanted to share them with you so that you can see them. Ooh, squeals, so pretty. I love the bling. Now, a little bit about these products. You're gonna be able to purchase those, like I said, on November 2nd. Very important, the designer series paper, the cotton paper, and the gems are only going to be available while supplies last till January 3rd. So if they sell out before then, that's it. So I'm gonna encourage you to shop early. All right, let's get started. Now that you know where this came from, that's gonna help dispel a lot of questions. I'm gonna start by flipping this upside down. We're gonna use on the back side. What I like to do before I get started is I like to kind of just curl this around my candy bar. Now I designed this one specifically for a Hershey's bar. This is a full size bar. So please keep that in mind. I'm going over the edges of the Hershey bar with my finger just to kind of create those creases because scoring is just way too hard sometimes, all right? Next step, we're gonna bring in some tear and tape. Now, whenever you're doing party favors or projects that move, which is what my card is going to do, you're gonna to wanna to use a really, really strong adhesive, and this is tear and tape. Now, if I can find the end, there we go. We are going to do an L format. So I'm gonna work near the outside edge here, and I'm gonna come all the way down, and then we're gonna rip here. I love that you can just tear it with your fingernail and we're gonna go here across the bottom as well. And then we're gonna do the same thing on this end. All right, then with tear and tape, because it's double-sided, you're gonna to need to make sure that you burnish that paper backing into the paper because if you don't and you go to lift off that paper backing, you can lift the tape. Now I'm gonna be using my Take Your Pick tool tonight several different ways, and I'm giving a big plug for this product because it's the best $10 you're gonna ever spend and you're gonna see why tonight. I'm gonna to use that paper piercing tool attachment to help me remove that paper backing. Now I'm just gonna take off a little bit right now, and I'm gonna do the exact, you know what? I'm gonna go on this end, I think. I'm gonna do the exact same thing here and I'm gonna bend it down. That's gonna allow me to put my candy bar back inside of here. You do not want to adhere it to the candy bar because then it won't pull. That's very important. So kind of navigating to where I had those crease marks once again, we are going to now remove the bottom tape and that's gonna come up and around here. And I'm looking to navigate this so that the end of my silver wrapper is here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna start closing this up on itself. Now it's stuck here, and this is gonna allow me to pull and kind of crease as I go. How many of us struggle with too much sticky at one time? Am I the only one? All right, and then I'm gonna slide this up just a little bit. I wanna make sure I got all my tape off. I did. And then I'm just going to press with my finger. That's going to seal the bottom. All right, now you're gonna see how the wrapper works. Now, here comes the fun part. Let me set that off to the side. We are gonna to need to make a mechanism here so that we can take our candy out. And I'm gonna be using a 1 8th inch hole punch. Again, this is 1 8th of an inch. I am just going to eyeball this. Those of you that are really particular, of course, you can measure it. I'm gonna go in, oh, about a half an inch, and I am going to punch a hole, all right? Now, before I go too far and I work on the, wreck of the, the rest of the mechanism, that's a tongue tire. I'm gonna work a little bit on here on how I'm gonna decorate it. Now I did do some of the pieces ahead of time only because I'm teaching you two projects tonight, so hang with me. Now those dies, you'll recall, I talked about were exquisite. Really, really fancy and really pretty. Now I'm gonna call your attention to this one right here. This is a border die. And look at this label die. So it did something a little bit different with this. And of course you can do this for layers as well. But what I did is I took some of this beautiful succulent cardstock and I die cut that border. Okay, so I've got a couple pieces here. Then I took the liberty of playing up that gold foil and I cut myself one of these with my die cutting machine. So I have this. I went one step further and I went ahead and I pulled out a greeting that says, let's celebrate everything. And we are gonna add some adhesive to the back of this. So I'm gonna bring in my silicone craft sheet here. I love this because adhesive, liquid glue, and hot glue will not stick to it, which means it's gonna keep my work surface sticky free because I have a tendency to go a little off the edges. Anybody else do that? And then I'm gonna take that here. 
on top of that gold foil and I'm just going to do my very best to center this without getting my head inside your camera view. You know when you get over 60 you got to get really close. Anybody else with me? <laughs> All right and then we're going to attach that here. Now let me talk to you about what I did with these. I thought this was so darn pretty so what I did is I flipped this over and I wanted to use it in a unique way. And I'm going to add some of that Stampin' Seal Plus here. Again, I got a little excited, so I'm going to curl what's excess to the back. And I'm going to take this, and do you see that little stitched edge here? I love this for your cards because stitching right now is very, very trendy, and this ornate die is gorgeous. But I am going to use that as my little cheat mark to kind of line this up. All right, and I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to grab a piece of scissor, a pair of scissors, a piece of scissors, I think I may have had too much chocolate before you guys joined me, and I am going to cut right underneath there. The great thing about this is you're going to do the work once for the die, and it's going to fit on both sides. So I'm going to add a little bit more of adhesive here, and then I'm going to line this up as well at, in the exact same manner. Again, just using that stitch edging here. And if you like it to extend past there, you can. I'm just going to kind of clip some of this away. I don't want it to hang over too, too much. And then what we're going to do next is we are going to add this to our candy bar. I'll save that for another project. Really, really simple. So this is great for birthday parties. If those of you are, that are going still to the office and you've got an office birthday coming up, this is a great little way to recognize someone's birthday with a whole lot of fuss. And who doesn't like chocolate? I know I do. I'm going to take that paper piercing tool attachment and remove those backings. Another great little thing for that tip. And that now is going to go here. Now I want to call your attention to the hole. Don't go too close to there. So we're going to mount that here. Nice and simple and pretty. Now you may have seen me drop my ribbon and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use this beautiful gold shimmer ribbon. Now I'm going to tell you that in the project sheet I used a different ribbon. And I'm going to talk to you about the importance of choosing your ribbon when we get to the card in just a moment. I'm going to feed this through here. How many of you have a hard time with that? All right. Remember I told you this is worth its weight in gold. You turn it and dial it, and then it comes with, look at this, a little stylus tool. Now this is how I use my stylus tool. I'm pinching the paper close, I'm holding the ribbon over the hole, and I'm just getting it started with that so I can pull it through. The reason is I don't want to use that paper piercing side because I don't want to pierce this beautiful satin ribbon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the ribbon all the way through. This is about 18, 20 inches. You're going to gauge how much you're going to use based on the size of your candy bar. I've opened it up. Do you see here how there's a little bit of a slack here? Watch. We're going to take this and you are going to shimmy this inside there and you are going to push. What's going to happen is you're going to have one end shorter than the other. Don't panic. Just pull it out and you're just going to give it a little bit of a pull so that you have kind of even ends. We want to want even ends here. Then what I like to do is I like to make sure that everything is going to kind of lay as straight as it possibly can. Of course, you know it's ribbon. It has a mind of its own. We're going to tuck that back inside the pocket. And now what we're going to do is we're going to make either a knot, or in my case, I was going to tie it, but I don't seem to find my tie. Well, that's okay. We're going to do a little slip knot. Hang it over your finger. Come around. I'm just going to slide my finger out. And then I'm going to bring these two raw ends through that loop that I made. So here's one. And here's the other. And then I'm going to pull and I'm going to push that down near the end. I want to keep the tension as close to the end of that candy bar as possible so that there's some slack there. And then what I'm going to do is tighten this up and then I'm going to come in with my scissors and we're going to make nice pretty ends. I could make dozens of these in an hour. Okay, ready? Watch. Oh, ah, here's the best part for those of you that are wondering how do you get to the candy bar? No problem. It just comes right out and then you can thread it back in and attach it to the ribbon. All right, now what I want to do, I'm going to try to shimmy it back in there where you guys are watching me. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you the card version to this, but it goes together much differently. So I want to make sure that we go through those steps. Now I know don't typically do more than one project in a live, so bear with me while I pull out all these other pieces because I want to make sure that I go through them with you step by step. So the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to work on the card base. And for this, we're going to need the paper trimmer because here what I want to do is do some score lines. So the first score line here is going to be at four and one quarters of an inch. 
So there's a nice straight ledge here on my paper trimmer, and I know that there's both a scoring and a cutting blade, and I love them because they can stay here on top of the track at the same time. They navigate up and down out of the way. You don't ever have to worry about losing them. So at four and a quarter, I'm gonna come over to here, and then I am going to score. Now I'm gonna slide over to eight and a half. Now here's the best part of that trimmer. Look at that. We have a nice long extended arm here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'll lay that down. And I'm gonna move this all the way over to eight and one half inches. And then we are gonna score. Keep in mind, all the pictures, cutting dimensions, and supplies are going to be in that free project sheet that's downloadable here in the video description. I'm gonna go ahead and take this now and fold it on that first score line, which is essentially in half and I'm gonna use my bone folder. This little half inch section here is gonna eventually be where we're going to house our adhesive. Now there's some important things about this, unlike the candy bar wrapper that we just did, that's really, really important, okay? So I'm gonna kind of leave this off here up to the top and then we're gonna show you in a couple minutes and I'm gonna teach you some things that I did wrong. The very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm navigating to decide what's gonna be my front. I like the seam to go towards the back just because it looks a little prettier. There's no right or wrong, it's just a Lisa thing. Let's go ahead and decorate this while it's flat. I've got a piece of gold foil. I know that's probably blinding and that beautiful designer series paper. So you see the theme I'm going with here, right? All right, so let me do this. Let me grab my silicone craft sheet once again and I'm gonna add some adhesive now to the back side of this. Now this is gonna be my wrong side. Remember we talked about the beauty of Stampin' Up's designer series papers being double-sided. I love that because it gives you lots of options and it certainly expounds on your purchase because with it having a theme on one side, the other side 99% of the time is generic so that you can use it all the time. All right, I'm creating that nice little frame all the way around. I'm gonna add a little bit of more, I'm gonna add a little more adhesive. I need to lay off the chocolate, right? <laughs> On the back side here. I'm gonna work around here, just adding my adhesive. This is my stamp and seal plus. And then this now is going to go here. And I'm looking to leave a very small margin. Now I opted for an eighth of an inch. Of course, you can adjust these margins however you'd like, and we'll press that in place. This next step was probably my favorite. And so I'm gonna push that off to the side and let's talk about what we did next. I used a piece of vellum. I love vellum. I don't think that it gets enough airtime to be quite honest with you. I wanna give you a look at it. It's an opaque type cardstock. It's not as strong as regular cardstock, but it has a little bit of weight to it, unlike vellum paper, so there is a difference. Now, before you join me, I took the liberty of doing this next step just to save a little bit of time since I knew we were doing the video together. But I wanna talk you through it. This is Versamark ink. It is a watermark ink pad. But the other thing that I absolutely love this for is for heat embossing. So what I did is I actually used the Eden's Garden stamp set and I grabbed a greeting that I wanted. So I wanted to do sending hugs because I'm gonna send this for a birthday. And I inked it up and I stamped it here. I covered it with gold embossing powder and I heat set it, okay? That's really important for you to know. I then took the liberty of die cutting. I wanna show you this little piece. Ooh, ooh, ooh. This little frame that's right here. These dies are beautiful. I will tell you too, I had to pass this through my stamp and cut and emboss machine just one time. That is how beautifully these die cut. I was able to release the paper very easily. And then I used my precision tip glue. And look what I did. I added that right around here. Again, just to save time. Now I wanna to talk to you about when you use glue here. Now you can use adhesive sheets, which means you can cut them out and adhere it to the cardstock. And then when you pull it off, it's gonna be sticky. I find with these filigree type detail dies that when I pull that adhesive sheet backing off, it kind of distorts the shape. I don't know if you've experienced that. So I have fallen in love with using this. And trust me, I am not a liquid glue girl. I'm an adhesive girl all the way. But I want to talk to you about this and why this is fabulous. Now, if you've seen my videos before, you know all about this. This is the multi-purpose liquid glue that I sell in my online store at lisastampstudio.com. I keep it in this little holder so the tip is always down and the glue is ready to go. The problem is, is this tip is not small enough for these little tiny areas. 
So what I did is I squeezed it into a precision tip glue applicator. Both these products can be found in my craft room favorites. They are not sold by Stampin' Up. This is. This and this are not. Now my craft room favorites is just a great little thing that I want to share with you. When I find things that work really good for me here in the studio that are not available in my online store, I love to share them with you because I think they'll help you as well. Look at that little needle tip. Now I want to show you here. Once I get my glue started on my silicone craft sheet, I can take my little piece and I can make little tiny, look how tiny I can make them. Is this incredible or what? This is going to be a game changer. And for those of you like me who hate liquid glue, check out this little tool. You're going to love it. It has a silicone lid. So you'll see that I kind of just wiped it off and you're going to cap it. And no, it does not dry out. I have had this in here for months. It's the same bottle of glue. This is fantastic. And that is how I attached it here to this embossed layer. Now, the th next thing I decided I wanted to do was layer this up just a little bit. So I'm going to come back in here and I want to add it to here. But you may also know that if you add adhesive to the back of this, it's going to show. So let me show you what I did. I came back to this little precision tip bottle. I got my glue started on my silicone cap craft sheet. Everywhere here where I knew it would not show is where I placed little tiny dots. So in essence, I did the same thing on the front side. I'm just doing it here on the back side. The liquid glue is very strong. It dries very quickly, so I would say probably within 10, 15 seconds or so, full set a little bit longer, but you don't need a lot. So if you use too much, you're just going to get frustrated. It's tacky, which I love, and it gives you just a little bit of wiggle room. So I'm going to put this on top of here, and again, there's that wiggle room I need so that I can align this where I want it, and then I'm going to press that in place, okay? While that's drying, I'm going to tell you that I brought in one additional layer. Do not be afraid to layer. It is the best thing that you can do for your projects. And on this one specifically, important for the inside. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. I'm going to flip that upside down. I'm going to give that a little cursory rub. And we're going to add our adhesive here to the back side. This now is going to go on top of here. I'm going to leave that same narrow margin all the way around. That's going to play up that embossing just beautifully. And now this can be added here. And I'm going to do that with dimensionals just to give this a little bit of a lift. I'm very cognizant of using a sufficient amount of dimensionals when I'm making my projects, especially if I know I'm going to mail them, which is what I'm going to do with this one. Whoops, let's change that tip again. Let's go back to here put in that paper piercing tool attachment, and then we can take off those backings. I know that my cards are gonna go through a mail meter at the post office, which has rollers on it. So I wanna make sure that they come out nice and attached and not lopsided. So I'm gonna attach that right here. Now, next step for this one is to work on the inside for the pull card. This is the area you're going to place adhesive. And just like we have done before, I am going to recommend tear and tape because we're going to be pulling the insert. This is a very easy card, I promise you, and wait till you see the end result. Now, I have another birthday project for you, and I also have a Christmas version that I'm excited to share with you, so make sure you stick with me. I'm going to take off that paper backing once again, and like I've done before, I'm going to leave myself a little bit of a tail here. How many of us ever get uh, really busy with our sticking, and then what happens is it kind of is all kittywonkus because we didn't stick it right, right? So that allows you just to pull a little bit at a time. We now have this. It's like a tunnel all the way through on both sides. Now what we're gonna to need to do is we're going to make our hole, similar to what we did with the candy favor. So this time, I'm not feeling as brave. So my grid paper here is just off your camera view down here in the corner. And I know that this is four and a quarter. So I know that two and one eighths is my halfway point. This is my favorite pencil. It's in my craft room favorites as well. I'm using that same 1 8 inch hole punch. I'm coming in just beyond my layers and I'm going to punch, okay? If that pencil mark shows, the eraser on this pencil is the best thing ever. I'm telling you what, it's a very, very super soft lead and the eraser erases beautifully. That's in the craft room favorites as well. Now for this one, I decided to do an insert that mimics the outside. And let me go ahead and pull those pieces out for you. Now, I attach these layers beforehand just to save a little bit of time. Again, gold foil. 
This is the succulent, soft succulent cardstock and more of that designer series paper. Same series. Is this paper incredible? But then I decided to go ahead and stamp my greeting on a little piece of white. Now I know that there are layers here and that's going to be important for the pull. So hang with me. I used Evening Evergreen ink for that greeting. And that greeting does come from this exact same stamp set as does the greeting I used on the candy bar. Okay. I loved this because I thought it worked perfectly for a birthday card and for the pull card. My heart is tied to yours. Tug if you need anything. And this is going to be for my girlfriend for her birthday. And I hope she's not watching because then I just spoiled the whole thing, right? <laughs> and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach this here in the center. Now, here is something that I've come to learn. The ribbon that you choose is very, very important. The ribbon in the picture of the card that I shared in the project tutorial uses this one. This is the fine art ribbon. I mean, it is stunning. I love it. But you know what I came to find out? Because it has a texture to it and it's a little bit rough, it was challenging to pull out and pull back in. So I'm going to recommend that you stick with a satin ribbon or something that's very smooth. And here's why. So we're going to go back now to the take your pick tool. We're going to switch out those ends once again because we're going to work with the ribbon. Remember, unlike the candy bar, this is open on both ends. That's going to be very important. We're going to hold that end here over that hole. We're going to give that a little bit of a poke through and we're going to pull that through. And again, I'm just going to do my best just to kind of even up those ends. I'm opening this up. Do you see it? Here's the ribbon. Now we're going to take the card and that's going to slide right down inside. Now, if you push too far, it's going to come out the other end. So I want you to stop the card once it goes in. My cutting dimensions are perfect for this. You don't have to worry about it extending. Before you tie it, pull it out. Do you see how sometimes the ribbon is twisted? Go ahead and just fix that so it looks all pretty. This is also another great place to put a gift card gift card holder. Blah! No more chocolate for Lisa. <laughs> Go ahead and use a glue dot and attach it on there. Now instead of what I did on the candy bar, let me show you what I did this time. I took a piece of linen thread. This is about eight inches and obviously my ribbon's a lot longer than I needed because I hate nothing more than fussing with a small piece of ribbon trying to make it work. Are you with me? And I just made a knot right here and I am going to cinch that. There we go. That's better. And because linen th thread is very, very thin, I am going to go ahead and tie this into a knot before I go ahead and I finish this with my bow. If you have too much slack through here, let me show you. Pinch it here and then just pull on the ribbon so that the knot comes closer to the cardstock. And then we're going to go ahead and we're just going to make a little bow here. And then, of course, you can trim up your ends and make it all pretty. So let me grab my little scissors here and we'll make this end pretty. Wait till you see these other ones and wait till you see what you're going to be able to do. All right. So here's the one that says sending hugs. This is my birthday card. Look, is that not just the funnest thing ever? Oh my gosh. That is fantastic, isn't it? Just like the candy bar, this can come out and it can slide back in. But I'll tell you what, they're just going to be doing this forever and ever. All right, this was the candy bar that we did. So let me go ahead and slide this one back in there. Let's see if I can get it to fit while you guys are all watching me. Yep. And I'm just going to make sure my ribbon comes to the top. Okay, there we go. So we have our candy bar and our card. Now, is this not an impressive gift in itself? Really, really pretty, but watch. All right, here comes the next one. This time I did one for Christmas. So we have... You're the icing on my gingerbread, and I have a coordinating pull card here for Christmas. Very simple, very simple. And don't forget that gift card holder idea. Stick that on the inside. The designer series paper for the gingerbread and peppermint is only six by six. So I want to show you something. Do you see how my little silver wrapper sticks out a little bit here at the end? I did fold it down. I kind of like it. I think it adds a little bling to the project because Hershey did a great, brilliant job of making that silver and metallic really, really pretty. So here we've got our Christmas one. Of course, we have our original one. And then let me show you the other one I created for you. Now, this one is exclusive to the live. It is not in the project sheet because I practiced before I'm with you guys. But are you ready for this one? This one says happy birthday. Oh, isn't that pretty? This is from Expressions in Ink. 
and I used the coordinating ephemera pack for this one. Pretty, I love that pink. And then here is the coordinating birthday card to this one. Wishing you happiness. Isn't this pretty? Love, love, love these. I want to know your favorite. Do me a favor. Go ahead and tell me below which one is your favorite. I would love to have your feedback. Now, as a reminder, do not forget that flash sale is coming up day after tomorrow. It's October 20th. It's for 24 hours only. It is 15% off all clink stamps in the annual catalog with Stampin' Up! Shop in my online store for rewards. I would love to give those to you for being one of my customers. Last but not least, I want to give you a couple important things before we go. I would love to include you in my freely free, okay, no more chocolate for Lisa, <laughs> free weekly e-newsletter. That's a lot to say. Head over to my website at lisastampstudio.com and if it's your first time, scroll down about halfway and a pop-up is gonna come up asking you to subscribe to my newsletter because in there I give you a free tutorial not shared on any of my other platforms that goes out every Thursday. It's a no frills email. We would love to include you. You'll find a very vast PDF tutorial library on my website and those craft room favorites I talked to you about tonight. That's under the shop button and then you'll see craft room favorites listed there for you. If you don't have a catalog and a current Stampin' Up! demonstrator, we would love to get one out to you. You can request your catalog over on my website. And finally, you're going to want to mark your calendar to come back with me live. I'm going to be back with you live on a Monday next week, October 25th at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Subscribe to my channel because then you won't miss anything if you click that little bell icon and the word all, which will send you reminders. We would love to have you here with us. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed what I've shared with you today. And I look forward to having you all with me next week. Gina, thanks for all your hard work moderating. Good night, everyone.